Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Van Dyke Mortgage West Mission Conference Sports Podcast brought to you by Durga Insurance Group. I'm Scott DeCamp, one of the co-hosts of this podcast. I'm joined by fellow podcast co-host, Ken Byard. Good morning. How's it going? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Today we are pleased to welcome Carol Bailey to the podcast. How are you doing, Carol? Great, thank you. Awesome having you on. Carol was a highly successful coach at North Muskegon for 37 years. Her track and field and volleyball squads were particularly successful. Uh, she retired in, in 2010, but she remains a big-time proponent of high school sports in the West Michigan Conference, um, more importantly, for girls' sports and women in sports, which is really vital, I believe. Uh, also an accomplished golfer. Um, I dare challenge any of you out there to a match on her home, home course at White Lake Golf Club. See how that goes for you. Have you played her in golf? Or not? I'm not, nor will I. Sorry. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> and I know my abilities, so we're not playing. I'll, I'll drive the caddy for you, though. Hey, there you right? go. I'll there drive you go. the cart. Got to keep it in the short grade. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what that's there. That's what you're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, I think that's the fairway or something. I try to see. Yeah, I think that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah. Even though that's a, the, what the name of our show was this summer, a little series, In the Fairway. Pretty ironic name for that show when you <laughs> yeah. see us golf. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I like to see all different parts of the course from all angles. Yeah, it's just you got to get your money's worth and see it all. Right. Get in the trees. <laughs> so what, what are you particularly good at in your golf game, would you say, Carol? Uh, it's short game. Big, you know, drive for show, win, putt for dough is what my dad always told me. And, oh, no. Uh, the, you know, I'm 50 to 75 yards behind the other big hitter women golfers at the club and um gotta get up and down gotta do the short game how often do you golf um as the saying goes every day that ends in one <laughs> <laughs> so um how are your weekends what's been going on it was good yeah we uh we had a good weekend um good win on friday it was a beautiful night all weekend was beautiful trying to be outside as much as possible celebrated a uh, buddy's 40th birthday at the valkyrie uh, did a little axe throwing, which, uh, sorry, Joe Grimm, I whooped his tail. I'm actually, n not to toot my own horn, but I'm apparently a naturally gifted axe thrower. Um, so this might be my next endeavor. So more importantly, though, you did not injure yourself, nor did you injure anybody else. No, there were quite a few people there that uh, could have injured people. Uh, I wasn't one of them, uh, but uh, to see their, um, their abilities um, was a little frightening. But all fingers were intact when we left. Have you been there, Carol? No, I have not, but I've heard about it. And um, I don't know, you know, my, yeah. my throwing days are a bit old. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty fun. I, I was surprised at how fun it was. So it was cool. So check it out. Well, speaking of fun, I think this is going to be a really fun podcast. Again, I appreciate you coming on, Carol. But thank you. Yeah, sure. And uh, but we always at this point, we always have to thank our sponsors. You know, without them, we wouldn't be doing this kind of content. So. Let's start out with uh, Grieve Law, West Michigan Joint Divorce, uh, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty with Chris Dykeman and Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan, John Botton, Coldwell Banker with Dave Duesenberry, who I saw uh, Friday at Montague, the Montague Oak Ridge game. And yep, he's still looking. Still swole. He's still, <laughs> he's, looking, he's looking pretty buff. Yeah, he's got to keep grinding. Yeah, so uh, Shied uh, Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, Special thank you to our title sponsors, uh, one of them, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore, whose commitment to finding you the right home loan is second to none. Their experienced licensed team is ready to work with you to ensure a smooth and timely loan process from application to closing. Check them out at 460 West Western Avenue in Muskegon or give them a call at 231-332-6500. They also have an office up here in White, or, excuse me, in Montague, uh, right there around the corner, just over the bridge. Uh, so... Visit, visit those folks there as well. Um, and don't forget, Durga Insurance Group, they're our other title sponsor for this. They look at uh, success through a different set of lenses. They place a relationship with their clients first. Regardless of what stage you're at in life, uh, they're there for you each step of the way. Um, you can see them at 1535 Fire Road, Norton Shores, or you can call them Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, at 231-744-9106. So... That said, there's a lot to discuss today. Um, again, I think we'll start with the, uh, it's, you know, we're in the middle of football season. There's volleyball going on. We're certainly going to get to that. We're going to talk about, um, you know, girls and women in sports, the history of girls sports in the area and in the conference, and touch on a lot of those different topics. But 
Let's start with um, the football games that we saw Friday that closed the book on the regular season, and now we're heading into the playoffs. But um, were you guys – I know you were at the North Muskegon Shelby game. Did you check out a game on Friday, Carol? No, I did not. So uh, what would you think of the North Muskegon Shelby game? You know, it, it <laughs> fell into place where we thought maybe it would fall into. Um, kudos to um, Coach Phil up there. He's doing the right things. Kids are buying in. They played extremely hard, and I think most importantly, just a good group of kids that uh, that were well mannered, had good sportsmanship. Um, but the f- culture up there feels like it's going in the right direction, and so um, you know they won two games this year, and so I think they're they're going about it the right way. And so uh, it was uh, it was nice being up there and, and just being in that environment again, especially after a week off. Didn't they have some success at the either middle school or JV level this year? Yeah, uh, well, I For think they yeah, is. I think they're f- like their fifth, sixth grade team won the league championship on Saturday at, mm. at Super Saturday at North Muskegon. Um, I know their JV team had a little bit of success, so things are I think going in the right direction for them. They had good numbers, that thirty kids on the sidelines. So, uh, good job to that that staff up there. I agree with you on Phil. Yeah. I, I like the things that he does with the team. You know, one of the cool things, and it wasn't football related, was when Shelby played at North Muskegon in volleyball this season, and he chaperone the spectator bus they i mean they brought it shelby had more kids there students there than the north muskegon yeah. did that night and um it, it was cool it was uh, i thought it was respectful and you know loud yeah and that kind of thing but i think were you at that match i was i sit on the bench that's what i thought just uh, with a clipboard yeah i thought so so <laughs> take a few notes um, we'll, and we'll get to that volleyball for sure but how many football games have you been to this year carol um a couple. I went to the Ravana game and another game um, um, when my family goes. I go along to kind of watch the the grandkids see what have them run around all of the stadium. But it's uh, real welcoming to be at Fred Jack's House of Pain. <laughs> and I, I know you're pushing for artificial turf. I've been pushing it for years. That a girl. House of Pain, are they going to start playing that? I don't over, know, but I like where your head's I'm, at, Carol. Yeah, that's the, the House yeah. of Pain. House of Pain. How do you fit football games in between golf? Well, you, you can't golf at night. Oh. <laughs> it's on Friday night. But lights. can you? <laughs> uh, I, I can't golf during the daylight, so. <laughs> <laughs> Might be better golfing at night. <laughs> right, exactly. No, Friday night under the lights. Can't so. beat it, right? Correct. No. Mm-hmm. So I was at Montague Oak Ridge. It was our game of the week. Um, it, it ended up. You know, Oak Ridge dominated. It was 45 to, to 7. But well, Montague showed some flashes. It's been a tough season. They've just have, had trouble sustaining things, you know. Um, so it was a tough game for them. But Oak Ridge is, I think they got a, a, another nice team. And, you know, and we'll talk about their playoff draw, which I really like, actually. Um, but, you know, Oak Ridge is just, they do what they do. And they just, Oak Ridge is Oak Ridge. I mean, right. we talked about it before. They just right. do their thing and they do it well. And, and that's, you know, meanwhile, Montague is, they're searching a little bit, but, you know, it's the new season, so we'll see where it goes. But, um, yeah, I, the game I was a little surprised by, not not by the the, the victor, but the uh, the uh, margin was Ravana over Hart 48 to nothing. So, I mean, I don't know if that guy if that surprised you guys at all or not. It did me. I, I, th- I thought that Hart really had a, a, an opportunity to, to go out at uh, Citizens Field and and pull out a win just because of the hype and the kind of the feel around the program and that community that uh, they had some momentum going. Um, but yeah, I was a little surprised by the score. Sounds like they kind of, uh, yeah, just jumped on them early and just never looked back. And yeah. We're pretty inspired that night. So, um, and, and as Joe Tannis told me, I talked to him over the weekend. He said, yeah, it just shows you that we're not where we want or need to be yet. Sure. Even though they made a lot of strides, six and three best record in 30 years. Yeah, a so. lot of strides. So, and then, um, you know, other games, Manistee handled Fremont. So Manistee's playing really well right now. Um, Ludington beat Mason County 28-8. to Of course, Whitehall was, you know, off. They had a, took a four-foot win from Orchard View. Right. So, and I think that about covers all the action in the league. But um, am I missing anyone? I don't think so, right? No, I, I think, think that covers it all. It all. Yeah. So, so we're going to shift – you know, kind of segue to high school football playoffs. The Selection Sunday show was yesterday. And um, I think it kind of went probably largely as expected, I guess, in, in, in some ways. But um, any early impressions, you know, based on 
what you saw with the what with, with the matchups are coming, and then these obviously got some notes here for you. But what are your initial impressions? Well, I, I walked away with two different things. Uh, one, as we watched the uh, selection show at Hobos, and big thanks to both Rasher and Hobos for sponsoring us to, uh, our dinner there. Um, I, I kind of miss the days when you didn't know who you were going to play before the selection show, and it was kind of the, the hype was built up. But with all these, um, you know, snooze to Lou or snooze to you and, and all those other kind of platforms, and they do a great job, but you kind of know already. And, and I don't – it just kind of takes away from the excitement, the anticipation from that night. And then, two, during the show last night, they were scrolling at they the bottom. They some of them. Yeah, they were scrolling at the bottom before the division started, so we knew he w- who we were playing before they actually went to the division. I saw that seven. early, and I'm so like, should I message yeah. it, put it out there? And I did, but so I was at the Whitehall watch party at the back, and what those kids did, like maybe a few minutes into the show, they took some they covered white it. paper and they covered it, folded it up and covered it so they couldn't see okay. the ticker. Right. But what, did you see the show last night or not, Carol? No, I was um, coming off the golf. Were you golfing? <laughs> <laughs> It, it was, was 80 it, degrees and it, skiing. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Were we at the home course? Yes. Yep. Do you play anywhere else or not? Um, I I do, but it's just very nice. 15 minute drive up, oh the, yeah. up the scenic, yeah. pretty drive. And, yeah. Um, great course. Great people. Yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, I agree with you on that. I thought that was a little yeah little odd that they would leak kinda, those out. Yeah, just kind of took away from the moment a little bit, but that's okay. So we'll we'll start right in with uh, Division Four. We'll look at this. Um, We'll look at there's seven West Mission Conference teams that got into the playoffs. There's six games um, because two of the teams play each other, North Muskegon yep. and Ravana. Yep. But um, in Division Four, Whitehall at nine and zero is hosting seven and two Big Rapids. Um, any early thoughts on that one? It's gonna be a big test for the Cardinals. Uh, I got a chance to watch them on film a little bit. There was a uh, outside possibility that we were gonna pick them up the week that uh, that uh, Holton. Uh, forfeited. So we watched some film. I don't anticipate Whitehall having any problems uh, with that first round game. Um, I, I just, it's going to be a big score, big blowout, in my opinion, based on what I saw in film. Have you seen or heard about Whitehall this year yet, no, Carol? I've heard about Whitehall. And what heard have you heard? They're big. <laughs> they are big. <laughs> They're big. And um, they've got a good squad. Yeah. I hope they make a great run through the tournament. Yeah, they do. They're, they've got all the pieces, but, you know, it's a tough road ahead. I think they should be able to take care of Big Rapids, and then, um, then th- they would get the winner of uh, Fruitport and Ludington. And uh, at that point, I think, you know, I, I would favor Fruitport in that in this first round game. And if that Fruitport Whitehall matchup happens, that could be a, a little interesting because Fruitport can score some points. And yeah. They shared the OK Blue Conference title with West Catholic, which they beat. Right. Right. And I would, and I agree with you. I would anticipate Fruitport winning, winning that first round, a matchup with Ludington. But uh, nice job to Ludd- with Ludington to kind of move things in the right direction, new addition to the league. Um, what I like about that Fruitport Whitehall uh, potential matchup, I, I think Fruitport has the skill kids to just go man mm-hmm. and try to match up on the edges and match their speed, and the battle really becomes up front. Right. And so you know. Not having seen Fruitport up front, uh, I know Whitehall is tough, but you know, Fruitport beat West by just doing that. They matched up, yep. brought havoc in the middle, and they beat them. And so, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they decide to play that uh, that game. But I would anticipate there being enough skill, kids, enough speed on Fruitport's side to maybe make that interesting. No, that's a good recipe. What you said, being able to match up and then just try to create havoc. The thing that I wonder about Fruitport is. What kind of depth do they have, right. like especially up front? Because Whitehall can, just takes a toll on you. Right. I mean, they can, if you hang in there for a half, good, but you still got, you know, 24 more minutes to play. And right. that, that, the depth, the, the, the strength, the size, the speed, all that stuff takes a toll after a while. So yeah. that's, that's what I would be really uh, curious to see. But yeah, kudos to Ludington. Um, they've been a, a pretty steady program, really. In the last several years, and they're back in the playoffs. They're at Fruitport, Doc Pierce Field, which is turf now. Um, Carol mentioned turf earlier with yeah. North Muskegon, and I mean, what do you think? Like, as a former athlete yourself and coach, I mean, we're kind of su- kind of going off topic a little bit here, but related. You know, as far as these turf fields that you're seeing cropping up, what do you think? I welcome them. Um, number one, I think there's less maintenance, 
and with a school district, because I taught physical education, I would just be um, using our football field, burning that off, because we're going across the whip, or the baseball diamond. And um, I would make big use of the turf field, because as Ken knows, I kept my classes outside till Thanksgiving. Hey Amen. That's how it should be. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, small games going across the width of the field, and um, less maintenance. You don't have to paint. I imagine down the line there might have to be some replacement with it, but um, the Saturday games for the youth football and soccer, especially at North Muskegon, I think it would be welcoming, and I would like to see a turf field. You heard it here. North Muskegon legend <laughs> wants turf. I have. <laughs> I have for years. I know. I have yeah, she, for years. But she's right, and so not to get off too far off on a tangent, but, but the, the thing that often gets overlooked is that the field is a classroom, right? And so I was a former PE teacher myself too. And so we, we use those, those spaces as classrooms. And so just more argument in favor of uh, a multi-use uh, turf field. Yeah. So anyway. So what, speaking of fruit, fruit ports, I have not been there to their field since they put turf on it this year. Seen the, seen the images and highlights and stuff. It looks great. So, um, so they did that. So they'll, there'll be a fast track Friday for that game, yeah. Ludington and Fruitport. Um, that'll be, you know, we'll see where that goes. I mean, it, it's a tall order, I think, for Ludington, but I mean, Ludington has surprised before, so we'll see what happens. But you never know. You know, the winner of that one, again, as we stated, will face the winner of Whitehall and Big Rapids next week in the district finals. So, um, moving on to Division Five, we have uh, one conference team competing in Division Five. It's uh, Oak Ridge. They're host. They're at eight and one, hosting Shepherd, which is six and three. I believe this is the first ever matchup between these programs. Um, like a lot of other sports writers, I really rely heavily on that Michigan High School football website. It goes back to 1950, so I don't know. Like Oak Ridge was founded, I think, at or around that time or a little after that anyway. So, But with a school like Shepherd, like some of these other schools, unless you know when they were founded, you don't know how really long they've been playing football. Right. But first matchup with them um, – Shepherds out of the Jack Pine Conference, you know, with the likes of Sanford Marine, Gladwin, Clare, et cetera. Um, the thing that really jumps out at you, this is Oak Ridge's 18th straight year in the playoff and 27th time in 28 Jeez. years. I mean, so when we talk about consistency, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, Oak Ridge's lone loss of the season was to Whitehall, 42-8 to eight at home. Otherwise, they've looked pretty tough, um, including recently. So um, any thoughts on, on this matchup? You know that, that's going to be a tall order for Shepard. Uh, you know, Shepard lost to Gladwin, who uh, is pretty tough in their division. Mm -hmm. I think they're Division Five. Yep, uh, they're in that same region. They're right. all in that re same region. Right. Um, but Oak Ridge is clicking. You know, they they've found themselves, um, and and they're sticking to their identity, which you know is kind of power football. Although they're running a lot more spread than they have in the past. Um, but their quarterback's playing at a high level right now. Uh, I don't see them having a problem with Shepard in the first round. And uh, that, that Belding matchup will be a good one. I anticipate Belding beating Howard or Tri-County. Uh, that, that, that Belding uh, Oak Ridge matchup, I think, would be an interesting one. It could be a good one. Yeah. So what do you know about Oak Ridge football, Carol? Oh, powerhouse. And um, it was always the one of the games that North Muskegon looked forward to playing back in the day when um, Coach Cook, Ed Zednick, Coach Schroeder were coaching, and uh, I remember over at Oak Ridge, we were behind. But let's give the ball to Scott Mahoney, and he just oh, yeah. he was a he was a beast. <laughs> moved it down the field, and I remember Coach Zednick saying, "Yeah, we were watching film, and this one time Mahoney, in that run, just stepped right on the chest of an Oak Ridge player, and just kept <laughs> right on going. And it, it was fun. And then another matchup was really great for Coach Caraba when. They beat Oak Ridge in the district, right? And he was so excited he yeah. jumped and blew out his knee. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a big rivalry. Yeah. No, seriously, yeah. And that was we talked about that yeah. last week, week before that. That's the one downside of conference expansion, which we'll get to later here in the show. But um, yeah, you don't you lose some of those matchups like North Muskegon Oak Ridge. But so yeah, Oak Ridge, uh, I really like their draw. Um, they are on the. They wouldn't see the likes of a Grand Rapids Catholic Central till the semifinals. Right. 
that's not overlooking Gladwin because Gladwin sounds like a very good team, maybe potentially their best team that they've had there. And so that could be like a regional final type thing. And I think Oak Ridge would host that. I think Oak Ridge has more playoff points than Gladwin, I believe. So you got to get there first, though, one game at a time. But That's I right. do like Oak Ridge's draw. Obviously, I like them in this game, and I like their draw. I like them to win the district and get to the regional. So. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah, Belding could be interesting, though. Yeah. That's a good program yeah. as well. So. Uh, moving on to Division Six, we've got a couple of West Michigan Conference teams competing in that division. Uh, we have Montague three and six at Reed City eight and one, and a quick tidbit: Montague is at eleven and one all, all time against Reed City. Now, what does that mean? It really doesn't mean much in in this matchup because each year is different. But um, Montague beat them in the district finals last year, thirty five to twenty two on Reed City's field. So, um, any early thoughts on that one? Uh, Reed City reminds me of Manistee. Uh, they run kind of that wedge two tight ends, three backs kind of look. Um, and we know what happened with the Manistee Montague game. Um, I see Reed City being overly physical and um, up front, just dominating um, and, and walking away pretty handily with that, that win against Montague. But you never know. So, again, I'm going to ask you what, do you, what do you remember? What are your Montague memories? Because you had some great Oak Ridge memories. Another... Yeah. Um rivalry for North Muskegon was was Montague not just in football but a multitude of sports and um, they're tough and it was just another backyard brawl you know it's um, sandlot football we're yeah. gonna <coughs> beat up we're gonna put our hand in the dirt is what coach Schroeder would say Get your hand <laughs> in the dirt. Mm-hmm. that's old school that's, yeah that is that's, that's yeah so no and Montague as we said you know tough season three and six that's just not Expected, I think it's they were two and seven several years ago when Pat Collins was there. So it's kind of those for for a program like Montague, those are kind of blips in the radar usually. Um, so we'll see how they regroup after this. But you know, when you get to the playoffs, you're I know James Young tweeted out zero and zero, zero zero, um, and and that's and that's what it is. I know that sounds cliche, but it is a chance for to you kind of hit that reset button. So we'll yeah. see what they can do. They've had a little success up there at Reed City, so we'll see what they do. But um, I still think that's a tough matchup. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know what helps you forget about a three and six season, a district championship. Right. So. And you know, the winner of that one actually would face the winner of uh, Kent City, Muskegon Catholic Central. Right. So if you're Montague, if you can find a way to beat Reed City, Catholic's a, a very good team too. But if you can compete with Reed City, I think you can compete with Muskegon Catholic Central. Hundred percent, I agree. So I would put those yep. teams probably on a similar type type of level i guess muskegon catholic central and reed city yep. so and then another west michigan conference team in division six a new west michigan conference team that is is uh, manistee six and three playing at boyne city nine and oh um seven o'clock friday uh, up there in boyne city and manistee's kind of been on a roll lately they um after losing the, the rivalry game with ludington they kind of Started having some really good practices. Uh, Coach uh, Troy Bitework was telling me, and it's showing in their games. So yeah. they're on they're on a bit of a roll. But you know, obviously, anytime you're going to play an unbeaten team, taking a little road trip, you know, that's always a challenge. Yeah, I, I really like their chances. Um, they are, you know, with the addition to them in the the conference, they're battle tested. And so to go up to Boyne City and beat a nine and zero Boyne City, who you know, no disrespect to who they play and what conference they're in. Um, I, I think Manistee has a real shot. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they beat them. I agree with you, and honestly, I was thinking ahead to my on-the-mark picks and column that I do that, that publishes each Thursday, and that's one of the games that I look at. I'm like, man, yeah. I'm tempted to go with Manistee because of that reason, because of being battle-tested. And um, whether it's football, volleyball, we talked about this, Carol, when, we were, when, when you um, kind of participated in our West Michigan Conference Summer Series we did with expansion, how important it is to play that tough schedule and how that helps you. Because you guys did that in your, with your teams, right? We love the competition, and we didn't ma- didn't care who it was. Yeah. It's just a game, and we wanted to always play the better competition and um, see what we could do. And the kids were competitive. It was fun. Yeah. It, it served you well, though, too, didn't oh, it? Yes. Like down the road? Yes. Oh, yes. Pun intended. Yeah. Served you well. Get it? <laughs> well done. Get it? Man, I wish I could have said that was intended. You spiked but. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. 
So anyhow, the winner of this one will face the winner of Elk Rapids Gladstone in the district finals. So, but yeah, I, I kind of am intrigued by Manistee in that one. So, all right, Division Seven. Let's try to be as neutral, neutral and level-headed as possible with this one because. We have two North Muskegon folks, or folks with North Muskegon, yeah. heavy North Muskegon ties, and then me being a Ravana native. So, again, so You're anyhow, this is a, what's that? You're outnumbered. I know I am. <laughs> so, um, but rematch from week seven, a game won 28 to seven by North Muskegon in our game of the week. Um, in that game, it was seven nothing for for a little stretch of the first half, and then right before the half, there was a. A kid, I don't, I don't really like him that much, but he caught a touchdown pass. It's that T.J. Byard kid. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry, Ken, I forgot that you were on the show. Yeah, that's fair. No, right. no, but <laughs> I don't know if you know the running joke <laughs> about what's going on with that, but I keep missing T.J.'s touchdowns on my video highlights because I've got my head down tweeting or doing something. All of a sudden, next thing I know, he's pulling in a touchdown pass. I'm like, don't blink. Oh, that's my right. Gosh, flashing. The Grab pan. your popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> So anyhow, uh, but no, he scored a big touchdown right before the half, made it 14 nothing, And I believe it was 21-0, I yeah. believe, and then 21-7, and then 28-7 yep. to put it away. Yep. But, I mean, I, I thought um, for large parts of that game, North Muskegon was pretty much in control, but Ravenna scrapped, you know. Um, Ravenna had trouble consistently moving the ball. Right. Um, it was a hard-hitting game, but it always is. And uh, those are kind of my recollect- recollections from that one. Ravana, like early in the game, North Muskegon coughed it up, and uh, Denny Belmonte got injured on, you know, second, third play of the game or whatever. And obviously they've been without him since. And, I mean, does anyone know what the status is with him or no? Uh, last we heard, he's uh, doing PT. Um, and hopefully, you know, we get past this first week and he's going to be back week two. Mm-hmm. So that's the kind of prognosis, yeah. So that's always a big yeah. boost to mm-hmm. get something like that. But and I, what I know is about North Muskegon, not seeing them a, a few times now, and then also looking at the stats from Friday's game, is they just got so many different kids that can make plays. I mean, seems like there's a new kid every week that yeah. I, I'm like, who's that kid? I haven't <laughs> even heard of him, and he's making plays. Right. So, I mean, that's the thing that's tough. You know, Ravana's got got some playmakers too, but they they rely heavily on Hunter Hogan to get it rolling. The Mabrito kids kind of emerged in recent yeah, weeks is. and they had him running the ball just because I think the uh, Shulo kid was out last week. Right. And so, you know, he's a big kid, big, strong kid. So it'll be interesting. And um, I mean, any other, what are your thoughts on that one? I mean, I think it's, they, as I say, it's hard to beat a team twice or whatever, right. but what do you guys think? on? Yeah. That? I, I mean, it, throw that first game out, uh, Never mind the score. They, I think it was closer than the, the score indicates. Um, it's going to be a, a battle of will and who makes the least amount of mistakes. Um, Hunter Hogan uh, is always a threat. Marbrito's emerging as a, a definite playmaker. So we're interested to see uh, what their game plan is in terms of uh, that emerging dynamic that wasn't necessarily there the first time we played them. Um, but it'll be a good game, and, and uh, both teams, I think, are, are excited to be in that rematch. Um, but for us, the, the the mentality is, you know, don't don't look at last last time we played them. You know, it's it, it was there's too many good things and bad things that you can take out of that. Let's just focus on this one. We know what they're going to do. They know what we're going to do, and let's go execute. So I'm going to try to keep up with Carol here because she's great with this history that she's bringing to the table. Um, I'm I'm no youngster really myself, even though I know I look it. But I was going to say forty. Yeah, forty nine. Okay, I'll be honest. <laughs> Almost fifty. Big five O's coming up. Oh, so, is it? Yeah. All right. Well, start of the year, New Year's baby. So <laughs> it's coming. But anyhow, what I'm getting at here, I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but being a ninety one grad of Urbana, um, I remember those matchups with North Muskegon back in the late eighties. She mentioned Scott Mahoney, um, Dante Hutcherson, um, Tim Dana, I think, was another name from then. Um, Carl Nichols, the, the good doctor. Yeah. He was the kicker on that team. Kicker. Well, Ravana beat uh, North Muskegon. It was a hard-fought game, if I remember. That was, It was 88, the 88 season. I want to say it was 10-7 to 7 or something very similar to that. I might be off on that score, but I just remember – 
it being a cold, rainy night in Ravana. Hard hitting game. I remember those names, but that was when Ravana started kind of getting on the map again. Because that was the first year that they got to the state finals okay. with Silverdome and Dusty Fairfield's second year. Okay. But um, what do you remember about um, those North Muskegon Ravana matchups from back uh, in the day? Um, interesting enough, um, I was on the sideline. That's when the headsets were cords. And so <laughs> I had Ed Schroeder's cords. Okay. Coach Schroeder. And um, he was a wanderer back and forth. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun to be, to be right there on the sidelines, and the kids would come off and hard hitting as you said it was and um just i really enjoy football but being right down the sidelines especially like a ravana oak ridge montague game you right. know it was who's ever going to play the toughest any given night anybody can win and that's what i i do remember but those were the um, early years of coach fairfield and uh, coach fairfield did his student teaching at north muskegon no kidding yes he was english Okay. And, uh, Speaking of, I got to <laughs> interject this real quick. You'd probably be proud of him, too, because he's about the only person I know that says Ravenna. Okay. He still calls it Ravenna. Everyone else that lives has lived there or been there calls it Ravenna, even though it doesn't look like Ravenna. Everyone calls it Ravenna. So he it, goes, educated people call it Ravenna. So he has to be right said. then, right? He's an English teacher. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm saying Ravenna in Ravenna. honor of Dusty Fairfield. There you go. So I'm looking back here at our good old website. Of course, mission. he played for Coach Cook. He did. At Reese Puffer. Yeah. So did Dusty always have the swagger to him, a little oh, cockiness yeah. to him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that goes with the territory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was the boys' um, track coach when I was the girls' track coach at North Muskegon. And um, he did a great job with it. Um, yeah. It's crazy how um, you just know people that – coach that were like called into coaching right it doesn't matter if you coach football or track or whatever it is good coaches are good coaches and they can learn the skill and they can learn all that stuff but how to handle kids and how to you know organize and you know, keep kids engaged in practice and all those things um good coaches are good coaches you were one of those it's dusty was one of those and, and they are that right that, that carries over for it's sure not just one sport right. specific right it's called teaching yeah yeah so Absolutely. just so we're on the record here i'm looking back at this michigan high school football site 88 it actually wasn't the 10-7 game i think that was the okra Ravana game that was 10-8 that year but this was week it was the last regular or last conference game of the season for ravana north muskegon ravana won 26 nothing and they were both undefeated in the league going into that. And un both undefeated on the season going into that. In fact, up to that point, North Muskegon had allowed only 15 points all season. All season until that point. Wow. And then they, lo they lost 26 to nothing. But it was a special Ravana team, too. Yeah. Um, Mark Jacobs and those guys. So, um, but yeah, so um, good memories of, of those times. And it's been a great rivalry, I think, with yeah, North Muskegon and Ravana. Con it'll continue yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, well, that kind of puts a cap on the high school football stuff for now. Now we, we can, we're really going to lean on uh, Carol. Um, this is, uh, of, you know, just just your experience in athletics, um, educational athletics, um, and just a history of, of girls' sports and sports in general um, in the West Mission Conference and around. And um, women in sports is a topic that I think is really important to address i know the title nine anniversary was fairly recently um it's right now how important do you think do you think that is that to that was huge that was huge because when i was um going through school i played fast pitch softball in elementary and then there was nothing mm -hmm. um, i did s downhill ski in high school but i think that's because they wanted to fill the bus because the boys were downhill skiing and so i couldn't wait to um get to the university to play everything and of course no athletic scholarships then and we just went from sport to sport to sport and the physical education uh, teachers they were our coaches and, and they coached for free and we had to raise our own money Jeez. and and so the the kids today i always try to sh share a little stories with them with the, the history that what you have right now embrace it because it wasn't always true. And we considered ourselves at Western as all walk-ons because we didn't get to go. Arena scheduling was, I'm dating myself, arena scheduling happened 
at that time. You didn't do it computerized, of course, but uh, if you were on the football team, you just walked in and they went ahead and scheduled your classes where all the rest of us, we had to go on a certain date. We didn't get to jump the lines to go ahead and do scheduling and whatnot, but um, eh, I wouldn't change it for anything. We you know, calloused a little bit. And I was never bitter because we still got to play. Right. So um, it's crazy. Softball. What else? I didn't play softball. You didn't play softball. No. Um, well, when I was young, fast mm-hmm. pitch softball. Yeah. And um, then downhill skiing in high school. Yeah. And wh- which high school was that again? Waterford Mott. That's right. I was the first graduating class. Yeah. So I'm dating myself. That was yeah. 1970. Yeah. So you're turning 50 this year? Yes. I graduated in 70, and I'm turning 70. <laughs> Not a day over 50. <laughs> no, I was Golf's <laughs> every day. That ends in Y. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, fun times. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up with um, 23 cousins, and they booted us out in the front yard of the farm. And we just played football until they wanted us in for dinner. And back out we went again. And then springtime, we always had our ball mitts. And my I was a, a younger cousin. So I always referred to my older cousins as my first coaches. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was fun. That's valuable. That's how it was back right. then. Oh. That's how it was. I yeah. miss That's those how days. I grew up. Yeah, Man-lock. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh, darn. That was just so much fun and so so innocent and just go out and play. And, yeah. you know, and then you go home when it got dark and, right. yeah. and woke up and did it again. When I was young, uh, my mom, there was a sandlot down behind us, and I was always down playing football with the boys, of course. And um, my mom would call me home early to beat my dad home because my dad really didn't approve of me being down there and playing football with these guys. <laughs> but when I turned 11, he gave to me my very own NFL football, and I still have it to this day. Shut up. It's great. It's just great. That's he, awesome. That's, that's pretty cool. He passed the torch. Go ahead. That is awesome. Uh, it, was, it was a really special birthday. What do you learn in that environment, do you think, too? Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. You have to um, call the games by the rules. Um, you, you make your own teams, and you don't have parents supervising or someone with a whistle on it. And that's the way I taught my physical education classes, too. They had to call their own games going on outside. And um, I was there to, to step in, but I truly believe that students embrace the fact they were in charge of their activity, and it wasn't someone with a clipboard and right. uniforms. It's not youth sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fully engaged yeah. Right, at every level. Yes. So do you uh, – I'm just going to steal mm-hmm. it real yeah. quick. Do you remember uh, Jamie Palais? I do. She was a Montague um, volleyball coach, and she coached uh, volleyball at Muskegon Community College. Right. So my first year of teaching, 97, um, I worked with Jamie. Okay. And um, – She's since passed yeah. a few years back, but you know, at the time, I didn't realize, um, you know, how fortunate I was, and I might get a little choked up, but she really was a pioneer in the area for for women in sports, yes. and at the time, I didn't really appreciate that. Uh, I just got a chance to work with her. I was excited, yeah. first year teacher, you know, kind of did my thing, but as I got older, and really started to, to understand what she did for you, uh, women in sports in the West Michigan Conference. Mm-hmm. She truly was a trailblazer. She was. And, and so I look back and think, gosh, darn it, if I would have just taken some time to listen to her stories and, and really kind of engage with her instead of kind of doing my own thing, uh, I, I'm, uh, that's a regret that I have. Uh, you you know, probably I, could get some of those stories yet from Mary Belt Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she was amazing, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, I was fortunate enough to be in that environment where Mary was around at Montague right. at that time. Uh, she'd worked up in Shelby, but yes. um, had some Montague connections. And, um, God, yeah, just to bring back time and bring her back, and she would have been a great mm-hmm. podcast person to tell her her stories because she, she really was a big piece in the West Michigan Conference in well, terms of women in sports. No, and that's, yeah, that's, I'm gr- glad you brought that up. And um, we're always learning. So, and that's, you know, that's why we have a great resource here yeah, as well with, with Carol. And um, um, so how, how far have things come with girls in sports, women in sports, and how much further do they need to go in your opinion? Um, I think at the high school level, I think they've pretty much leveled out and there's equality between the boys and girls sports where it wasn't always that way. Um, 
when I f first started getting into high school, but I was fortunate when I taught at North Muskegon. I came and I was hired into coach girls basketball, and that would have been in um, 75, 74. I was getting this paid the same as the boys' varsity basketball coach, and I know other schools didn't have that. They were still fighting for it. And at the um, getting ahead of myself here, I, I do think that there's a, a balance with that Schedule B salary-wise. Um, right. I got into it a couple years when I was tr fighting for equality with volleyball coaching, and someone said, well, you can't compare apples and oranges. And I said, well, I'm getting the paid the same in the classroom as a physics teacher. What's the difference between basketball and volleyball? It's just an act activity. And right. um, Oh, we don't want to touch that. We don't want to touch that. I said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it kind of had to push quietly with sure. it. But I wasn't real burning bridges down or et cetera, but, um, because I wanted to coach the girls, and they needed that. Yeah. And I didn't bring that onto the court. We just went and played. Yeah. Well, well that's a fight worth fighting. It was. Yeah. And you said it earlier, too. It's, it's not as much coaching. It's teaching. Correct. No, and it's just a different environment, different class, right. quote, classroom. It is. That you're doing it. Yeah. That's the best coaches. That's what it is. They're teaching constantly. Absolutely. So um, um, what are your best memories of your time at Western, would you say? At Western? Yep. Oh, um, my coaches. I had just outstanding coaches. And Jean Friedel was the field hockey coach. And um, she would tell the stories that um, when she would be playing summer ball, she had to change her name. Otherwise, she, she was going to get kicked out of the university. Really? But, yeah. So she w had an alias name when she was playing summer ball. So, but um, the professors and coaches that I had, they were the true pioneers for girls and women in sports. And um, at that time, we ran all our um, athletic programs through the, what was it called? Western's Recreation Department. It was WRA. Mm -hmm not GAA, which was the High School Girls Athletic Association. Okay. But um, it was just through a university club. So we were just basically a club status. But um, the practices were great. My teammates are great. We still get together every summer. We have um, the Divot Divas. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and, you know, it's the same group that comes back to play, and the stories are the same, but the lies are a little bit bigger. <laughs> well, absolutely. And, yep. and we, we have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Have a good as you time. should. And our coaches show up yeah. as well. That's great. And at 92, you know, they don't play golf anymore, but um, – shows up just to, because we were their kids that's awesome so i so if i go out golf with my buddies the divot dudes maybe yeah there you go. hey I, I would join that club <laughs> there you go. Yeah. and so correct me if i'm wrong carol but you're in the western michigan university athletic hall of fame i am okay that just want to confirm that seven yep, yep. fantastic yeah, that's awesome yeah. it was i was quite shocked that's yeah. awesome yeah it was um quite an honor yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I, um, I have, so, uh, let's see, five of my roommates are also into oh, the home. Wow. Game. Wow. And so it's, that's pretty special. It's, it's a unique club. Yeah. It's good stuff. So, yeah, I spent 13 years in Kalamazoo. So I covered Western Michigan quite a bit when I was down there um, from like 2000 to 2013. I asked you about softball because I was going to try to impress you, but it blew up in my face. Uh, Fran Ebert. Fran Ebert. Yeah. Yep. So I was going to throw out that, that name, <laughs> the, the name of the softball just field. Just name drop. Softball Ebert Field. <laughs> I don't know. Field. I never got to meet Yeah, I had her. Ms. Ebert, but that's yeah. the name of the softball field. She taught, um, of course, I have a coaching minor, too. Yeah. And, of course, she taught uh, advanced techniques and coaching. Uh, softball was her, her specialty. Basketball. She also um, was an author of a couple books. Um, didn't... Um, trying to think of the name of the basketball book that she put together it wasn't we didn't refer to it as man-to-man -man defense because we're women and so it was i think five player basketball because mm -hmm. prior to that time six player basketball we had the rovers that could go the whole length of the court defenders and offensive players which they played out in iowa for a number of years and it would pack the house with six player basketball and um, she was a real advocate for AAU basketball mm. club, basketball and etc. and softball. Mm. Right. But she was a, she was a legend. Yeah. She was a very good um, instructor. 
for sure. So, um, coaching volleyball and track at North Muskegon. Yes. What are the things I guess that you're the most proud of? You know, you won so many meets, matches, titles, etc. But what are the things that really stick with you the most to this day? Um, probably the relationships that I developed with the student athletes, and uh, they would come into the gymnasium just big eyed, just knowing that we were going to have a good practice each and every day, and we did. And um, the um, friendships of the kids at North Muskegon, of course, you taught there at North Muskegon, a small, intimate school district, right. and. You start with this group of kids in kindergarten, and you continue all the way through senior with the same group yeah. of kids. But mm -hmm. um, I, I enjoy seeing the athletes now, and they talk about the glory days and um, who we played and practices, and that makes me feel good. So I'm real proud of the legacy that I left at North Muskegon. And now my um, daughter and her family have moved back. And so her kids attend North Muskegon schools, and my oldest one is seventh grade. And she says, you know, Nana, every time I walk down the <laughs> hallway, I see your picture here, I see your picture <laughs> there. I, I said, just embrace the legacy. Right. Ride awesome. it. Ride it. Phenomenal. It. So it, it's fun now. So I'm getting back more into yeah. the, the school now that I have family involved with it. Grandma was a rock star. <laughs> just embrace it. That's and, right. And, and uh, during my tenure as a principal there, it was good to have Carol back in the building. Um so she kind of got back on board with helping volleyball and um, all that good stuff. And, and I distinctly remember uh, Deb Johnson telling me one time that it was just refreshing to hear Carol's voice in the gym. And like things were kind of normal again. And, and uh, what an attribute to you and your legacy when you can have staff members uh, who were fortunate to be in that building with you say that as you return, you know, just that voice. Uh, w was yeah, a soothing you know, it's in its weird way, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know that was um, that was home. No, and that needs to be embraced. That that was home. That's a oh. beautiful gymnasium, by the way. For sure. That the, the history and and all those things, the legacy, all those things need to be embraced. I think. Absolutely. Um, it's easy for maybe the modern day athlete to maybe not remember that. Right. So and then, you know, going back when I was uh, in college, and I tell the story to the kids that. If you played basketball and you've played volleyball, there are different seasons. You shared the uniforms. <laughs> you didn't have a different set of uniforms for the basketball team and the volleyball team. And now, now a uniforms. lot of teams have multiple uniforms. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not just home and away, yeah. but multiple right. home. Exactly. Saturday Looks. uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was at the collegiate level. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So That's crazy. So take me back a little bit. I know it's it's tough, but best volleyball players and teams that you remember from the West Michigan Conference? Happened, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's prepared. I had to. Uh, That's what a good teacher I is. That's is right. Prepared. That's archives right. archives because there's just so many. It's easy to forget them, to leave somebody I, I, out. I, oh, absolutely. You know, I could have just brought my all-state list. Right. <laughs> and I almost did. I almost brought, I brought my all-state all list. But um, probably, um, you know, I took over volleyball. Oh, what year was it that I started? What? Uh, 70, no, 83. 83. Otherwise, they're going to lose the program. Um, and so I had um, JV and varsity team and had six on the varsity and, excuse me, seven on the varsity, six on the JV mm -hmm. and worked for just the one salary because I wanted to see the program go. But it really got going... Um, during my lunch period, I would have middle school volleyball going on. And Stacy Saunders was playing middle school volleyball. And I can remember um, going up to Shelby because the other West Michigan schools were playing middle school volleyball. And so North Muskegon, we show up, and one of the coaches said, well, how come North Muskegon is here? And Karen Kirk, who is ceased, um, she's passed away, I think, a couple years ago, um, said, well, Carol runs this noon hour volleyball program. And wouldn't you know it, we go out and we win that tournament. So that no really yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I had Stacy Saunders uh, on that group, and um, she was a jumper. She was one of those jumpers that would jump and then go up again. And yeah. She played a middle hitter for me, but she went on and played at K College as an outside hitter. So she's one of those you'd oh, mention, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. else is in that discussion? Well, got to, you know, 
leave Stacy, and then you go to Amanda Wagner, who's in the Muskegon Area Hall of Fame mm -hmm. as an all-around athlete, mm -hmm. and Kathy Brenneman, the Schroeder girls, Annie and Young Schroeder, that's what I call Phoebe, Young <laughs> Schroeder, and then um, the Buckner girls, Adri and um, Anita Buckner, they were both setters for me quarterbacks on my team and they're very very good and then um kirsten buter i rode her back mm -hmm. to the state finals and she was another another jumper but um it was fun you know I, I you know there's probably 15 other kids i should include i didn't coach but the Kraba girls were outstanding mm -hmm. lisa namick the year that they won the um state championship with david ross um we went to like four final fours and we were in the finals once yeah and it's it was fun. I remember when they were at uh, University Arena to a Reed oh Fieldhouse at Western. That was cool. They went away from that just because of the change of season. Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, it would still be at Western. That was super cool. It was fun covering that stuff yeah. there. It was. It was like a great facility to play volleyball. Any others, like, out, you know, outside North Muskegon in the conference that really just jumped out at you that you're like, oh, wow, well, that was a know, great player. You've got Danny Potts coaching up the Fruitport Trojans and um, Nicole Bale. I've already mentioned her name. She was outstanding. And then the Punches sisters, the three H's, Heather, Ho mm -hmm. Heidi, and I can never remember the third one. Holly? Yeah. Holly, oh. Heather. I don't remember. Heidi. Yeah, the punch. It, it, yeah, the punch that, that's sisters a big were, name. Were good. Um, and Heather was our varsity well, coach for no, the last right. five or six yeah. years. Yeah. Right. Right. And um, she was really good. Yeah. She was a student teacher of mine. There we go. The bales, uh, you know, yeah. at Fruitport. Right. Yep. 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 And then um, you can't overlook Whitehall. The, what Ted Etzel has done with the Whitehall mm -hmm. program, he's right. done an outstanding job. And then you, and we talked about Montague. You know, the North Muskegon Montague matches were epic. When Mary Bell Jackson was coaching, you know, it was just constant. We look forward to those competitions. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So what about uh, switching over to track? Because you won some state titles there. Three. S and so memories of that, but also who are some of the names that really jumped out at you? I, mean, well, I know that's it, a, you know, cla a collective day, effort, too. You only but. had um, basketball and track. So mm -hmm. you didn't have the soccer and mm -hmm. softball. And if we didn't have um, soccer and softball at North Muskegon, you'd be looking at state championship For sure. track mm -hmm. teams time and time again. Absolutely. But I think that's happened throughout the state. Right. Yeah. And I, you know, I'd much rather shag fly balls than run quarter miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Or maybe do both. Uh, right. There, there you go. You know, your daughter ran track. But right. you, um, Annette Bullhotch. Mm-hmm. She was a shot putter and discus thrower for me, and she's just all around really good athlete. And she went down to Indiana on a track scholarship, but she was an excellent basketball player too. And um, so you you ride her back because you're looking at 20 points at the state track meet even for you, right? Step no, off yeah. the bus. <laughs> yeah. And 20 points at the state she track meet, dominant. Lot. Yeah. And then you have um, the Guy sisters, Cindy and Shelly Guy, who were. Um, 11.200, I'm talking 100, not meters, sprinters, both of them, mm -hmm. over 18-foot long jumpers. And, and then you throw sprint relay teams with them. Right. One starts, one anchors, and away we go. And that was fun. And um, Jenny Knowlton was a middle distance runner and a high jumper, held the high jump record for a number of years at North Muskegon. The Jarkson girl, Julie Panzenhagen, Jody Cottrell. We, d we just had a, a really good time with track because that was the, in the spring, that was the only sport that the girls had. Mm -hmm. And then the fathers got behind their daughters because they ran track for Wes Bunks at North Muskegon. Stan Guy was quite um, prominent of, and proud of his daughters, and rightfully so, because they're just really outstanding. But um, what was fun back then is um, we were winning state championships Muskegon Catholic was winning state championships in Class B. Mm -hmm. And Dot Cheverini, um, she she schooled me on some sprint relays. She <laughs> would run Cindy <laughs> Bordeaux second in the, in the short sprint relays. And Cindy Bordeaux, who is um, Cindy Lloyd. Okay. I don't know if you know yep. the Lloyd mm -hmm. family in North Muskegon. She'd run second, and she'd get out to Elite, and we just couldn't catch her. 
even though I had some couple fast legs, you know, my second uh, leg could not compete with Cindy Bardone. So I had to respect Dot Cheverini and her teams, the Catholic teams. It was fun competition, and at that time, in the dual meets, we ran four places, and so you got points. And um, we were always instead of three, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We were always keeping score, and, and that fourth place, that was important. That, that you got fourth place, that one point made a big difference. Right. And then the um, Mona Shores with Jerry Fitzpatrick and mm -hmm. his daughter had great track, and then um, Whitehall. Carol Biederman had outstanding track teams, yeah. and they were Class C, and we would just go neck and neck with, with each other who was going to win the regionals, or et cetera, and um, it was fun. And but to, yeah, to your earlier point, too, about think about North Muskegon specifically if, if there was no girls soccer, because we know how well they've been doing lately. Take all those athletes that they've got, put them on the track team, now look at what you have. Right. Oh, yeah. Now you're kind of obviously spreading them out, yeah, you know, just, just between different sports. Right. Can, can can I ask two questions real mm -hmm. quick? Um, so the the change of seasons that happened uh, a while back. What are your thoughts? I'm bitter about what that. Are, yeah, I was going to say, what are your thoughts on that? And then, uh, well, I'll let you answer that first, and I'll give you a second well, question. Who wants to be in the gym in the fall? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And I and I just had a tough time because volleyball at that time was a Saturday tournament it's like wrestling was, was it was tournaments and I just couldn't see being in the gymnasium in the fall on a Saturday and that probably opened up the door for my excess a, a little bit but um, they always thought that change of season came about because there was a prominent group of people in Grand Rapids that their daughter went to Georgia to play volleyball because we were playing in the winter and the Big Ten didn't look at their daughter for volleyball. Right. Well. Yeah, the East Kentwood. The, uh, East Kentwood. Kentwood but Evelyn, the, the I story think maybe? gets better. The story gets better because I was at the Cotton Bowl when Western played at the Cotton Bowl and they had a reception for Western alumni there. And this guy comes over he says I really want you to talk to my wife because she was very prominent with the change of season for volleyball and I said no you really don't, <laughs> <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> but if you do I will and so he introduced me to her and I just said we had such a great thing going uh, basketball was great in the fall for the girls you had a number of officials and volleyball and I, I, I advocated that she said well I said, if you wanted to have a club season in the winter to be able to compete with the other states, I said, start your own season. Start your own fall season. You don't have to change everything. Right. Because not only did it affect volleyball, but with the boys' sports also were right. affected. Mm -hmm. There's some that would flip golf and tennis. And uh, she said, oh, no, no, it wasn't that at all. And I said, well, that's what we were told because your daughter didn't get looked at for Big Ten. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't that. And I said, well, tell me what it was. She said, it's because our daughters were getting the graveyard shift for practice at the school instead of rotating like we do at North Muskegon, right. some mm -hmm. three to five, five to seven, seven to nine. Everybody would flip and take that graveyard shift. We always had the graveyard shift. And I said, well, what school district is this? She said, well, it's Forest Hill Central. I said, oh, Amway Country. I said, but that's a local problem. Mm -hmm. Right. You took mm -hmm. a local problem. I said, because we. Yeah, schools figure it out. We, we yeah, right. 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 We adapted and we changed our practice time so yeah. that we weren't always in the graveyard shift. She says, well, you're one of the lucky ones. And I said, well, that was a local issue on your part. Yeah. And I commend the high school athletic um, association. They took it all the way up through circuit court, and that cost them money. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they didn't want to see the change of season either. Cost and a lot of money. The, more yeah. Majority of the school districts, I don't think, want the change. I would of agree. Season. Yeah, I hope that the MHASA starts to have conversations about reconsidering uh, that and yeah. kind of moving back in the direction that it was. My second question, real quick. Um, the, you know, we were seeing more kids involved with club sports, year-round stuff, specialization. I have to believe you're not a huge advocate of those sorts of things, especially the specialization. Right. You know, the club sports, they are what they are. Um, just some thoughts on that. 
Um, I think um, variety is the spice of life, and you're a much better athlete, and the collegiate coaches will tell you they want to see you play everything. And uh, I know my own granddaughter is playing club soccer. Okay, that's you know, it's fine. That's what you want to do, but you need to be playing other activities as well. And um, I just think that number one should be your high school team, and play all the disciplines and contribute to the outcome of your local high school, and let the chips fall where they do with the um, club season. Because if you're good enough, they'll find you. They will find all you. Right. And that's what I have told people. Um, if you're good enough, and I got in conversation with a lady once, and she said, "Well, we, you know, you gotta be in club. You can only." You know, she's talking swimming. I said, "Oh no! If you're good enough, they will find you, because if you have the height and the quickness and the jumping ability, they will find you." Absolutely. Yeah. So, I was gonna take it down a road. One more topic, but I'm not sure if we have time, but. Um, I guess I can touch on it real quick. Thoughts on um, balance in, in sports coverage, maybe, for um, boys and girls sports. I know at, at Catchmark where we try to keep as good a balance as possible. Um, I know we cover a lot of girls sports, and I know I always did it on live too, but um, how do you feel about that real quick? Are you seeing um, um, what, where it should be or, or no? I truly miss the days of the Muskegon Chronicle coverage in the daily newspaper, mm -hmm. and, and that was the read at night. Um, you have to search for things, and mm -hmm. yours um, avenue is very good for the girls, and I appreciate that. M Live, the local sports jo journal is another advocate for it, and you're still going to get the football, basketball boys. They're going to be the headline mm -hmm. that people are looking for, but if you're, you want to find out, you g you got to dig a little bit for it. Even on the High School Athletic Association page, you got to dig for mm -hmm. a few little things. It is different. It's different yeah. nowadays. Different. Yeah. So thanks a lot. You were fantastic yeah. on, oh. on the podcast. You really brought a lot to the table, Thank and you. I appreciate everything you do. Thanks for the um, invite. Yeah, but everything you continue to do for sports as a whole, not just girls' yeah, sports, but I'm, girls I'm, as a whole. I'm fortunate and honored that uh, current coaches let me sit on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, could, I, could, I could go into practice, and they let me have a few words with, with the girls as well. Well, yeah. they're learning it's from fun. a legend. It's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, before we say goodbye, though, we are going to uh, thank our sponsors one more time. That's Grieve Law, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty with Chris Dykeman, Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan with John Botten, Coldwell Banker with Dave Dusenberry, Shide Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, and our title sponsors, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore and Durga Insurance Group. This was Episode 10 of Season 2 of the Catchmark Sportsnet West Michigan Conference Podcast. I'm Scott DeCamp, Ken Byard, Carol Bailey. Thanks a lot, everybody, again. Thank you. Hope everybody's having a great week. Uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Go Norse. <laughs>